This is Uncle Joe Caprio. And this is Uncle Joe Caprio. And yes, this is also Uncle Joe Caprio. And if that last name Caprio sounds familiar to you, well, it's because, oh yeah, he is indeed the brother of the famous Judge Frank Caprio from the television show Caught in Providence and social media. You know who the judge is. He's internationally known for his kindness, his compassion, his fairness to all people, and his playful sense of humor. Uncle Joe, however, has a slightly different reputation. I did say slightly, right? Yeah. Some may say eccentric, some may say irreverent, and some may not say anything at all. Miguelina, see this guy? Him, yep. him, right here. It's my brother. <laughs> I hope that's on camera. Right? Uh, with all my respect for, uh, for the Saint Father. Saint <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, my friend, Uncle Joe Caprio. Uh, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the Uncle Joe Caprio, my buddy. How are you, Uncle Joe? Clap your hands just a little <laughs> bit louder. Oh, he oh, is I, the real I was deal. in the Stevie Wonder today. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, how are you? I'm Uncle Joe. Yes, yes. Now, Uncle Joe, uh, let, let me make sure I tell folks out there that what they saw in that opening sequence, what I left out is the fact that Uncle Joe is actually the creator and the executive producer of Court in Providence. Yeah. And actually, he started taping his brother doing court proceedings all the way back late 80s, early 90s. Yeah. And so, Joe, tell, you gotta, you gotta, please tell him the story. What, 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 what was the setup for that? Because I hear the judge wasn't all that thrilled in the beginning. Well, he didn't think this was gonna work out. And look at, look at what it's become. Well, it was a story where I was uh, videoing a lot of things in the state and outside of the state. And I was doing documentary sporting events. And uh, one of the functions, my sister in law, Joyce, one of the family functions, my sister-in-law Joyce says to me, she says, Joey, why, why don't you video your brother? So I said, you know something, I, I, let me talk to him about it. So when I saw him, I says, Frank, Joyce had an idea about videoing in the court. What do you think of that? She said, he says, Joey, if you want to do it, it's fine. So I, I says, well, let's, let's try it for a week. It's a courtroom show like no other, caught in Providence. These cases are real, unrehearsed, and about you, the people of Rhode Island. From prisoners to parking tickets, Judge Frank Caprio has heard it all. It's very difficult to believe, but these things really do happen because it's real life. And it happens right here in the Providence Municipal Court, and no other place in the world. You be the judge. And now, caught in Providence. And at the end of the week, we, we were logging over a hundred messages we were logging over a hundred messages and and then going into the into the first month it was more sometimes 120 130 140 people would call we had three lines uh if you see me moving around this is my dog <laughs> underneath the, my black sherman uh shepherd be a good boy can't you say i'm doing a podcast for the people Stop biting my leg. So, where was I? Uh, you were, I was getting mauled. You're telling the story of how you, how we became caught in Providence. So Phenomenal. after after a few weeks, so after a few weeks, it was uh, really catching on. And then we had a message part of the show. Uh, the the message part of the show was uh, very popular also because people got a chance to say what they wanted to say, unfiltered, unfiltered. Yes, I got comments for the people about uh, speaking different languages. I got a better idea. Instead of having interpreters or giving people a fair deal, what's, why don't people learn how to speak English before they even come here? There was uh, no woke or halfway awoke culture in the 80s, late 80s. It, it was what it was, so we put them on. And again, uh, uh, more viewers. Hi, I'm calling about the show. Um, I watch the show when I come home from school on break. 
And, you know, it's kind of ridiculous that people always have to mention race. Why can't people just get off the race issue? You know, I mean, all my family are Hispanic, and I speak very good English. So the people that are calling and saying about people that don't speak English, they need to learn how to speak another language, too. A lot of the jobs require bilingual people. I think the job, the judge is doing a great job. I commend them. So basically, why the show was a, a success was because of my brother. You know, I point the camera at him, and uh, he dispelled justice in the way he saw fit, and people liked it. People mm -hmm. liked his compassion. I mean, if you try to put something past them, he will know in a New York second. And, you know, not that things won't go so well for you, because even at that, you know, he, he'll help them out, especially when he knows they need it. But he doesn't like when people lie to him. Yeah. Or try to get a, a, a round to him. That's a that's, snow job. A snow, that's, that's what he what calls, he calls it. it. A snow job. A snow job. And yeah. I saw a couple of blizzards delivered in that court myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? But what are you going to do? Gotcha. But that's how it started. It became uh, very successful. Then we went on to Channel 6. Uh, John Methier would call this, and he had interest in the show. So we went on 6. I think we were there five or six years. Yeah. And then uh, local local TV station here uh, in Rhode yeah, Island. Yeah, local of ABC local affiliate in uh, Rhode Island. Maybe a few years after that, uh, Brad Johnson from Debma, D E B M A R. Yep, Debma Mercury. Debma Mercury called. And he had an interest in the show. We liked the show. We liked the cons. He liked the whole thing about it. So we set up a meeting for us with the owners of Debma Mercury in New York to see if the show, we put the show on uh, national TV. Some of the other uh, shows they uh, had at the time was uh, Wendy Williams mm -hmm. and- uh, it's, uh, Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey. Yep. Steve okay. Harvey's That's great. Steve, Steve Harvey. And they, they had about three or four other shows uh, that they, they had on. So when we went there, I says, you know, we're in this company. We got a public access show. We're here in the press, Steve Harvey and Wendy Williams. And, you know, but when I, I met these people uh, in New York, which I, I know nothing about show business, I just went by my instincts. I told them about the show, what it was. They asked me a lot of questions. Uh, and in the end, they said they have a hundred reasons not to put the show on but they're gonna put it on anyway. So I think they took 20 shows. I think it was 20 shows. And with those 20 shows, uh, uh, we did very well and we continued on. And when COVID came, it's, you know, the Providence Municipal Court is just what it is. It's not a studio. It isn't Warner Brothers, it's Providence Municipal Court. Mm -hmm. When the city council closed down the city, it's closed. Right, right. And June 1st, we'll be going back into court and it's over a year. Yeah. It's over a year since uh, we've been since to court. Been in court. Yep. So we'll we'll be back and we're gonna we'll have some fun with that. We always have fun in court. Court is great, and you'll see Ziggy in court and Danny and uh, everybody else who has uh, something to do with the court. Gotcha, gotcha. So JoJo, this podcast, if I recall, uh, it, I think it came out of the fact that you have encountered the, fans of the judge the, not just locally but well over the overseas sad, the sad part is i had fans i didn't even know it ah geez. i had all these fans i had like i, I like I, when i looked at the page I, you know for me like because I, I didn't involve myself in the page at all it says five thousand people this is the like, uncle joe facebook page by the way the uncle joe facebook page these thousands of people telling me how they love me, they love the show, it was great, and how they pray, and all, all of this, and I, I never answered them. So when I saw it, I was really sick. Uh, ultimately, them not being respond, uh, responded to was uh, my fault. I thought, you know, they, they had people that were taking care of three pages, and mine was one of them but uh, mine slipped through the cracks. So when I saw it and I says, how, how am I supposed to respond to this person? This this message is from 2019, Uncle Ooh. Joe, we love you. You know, I, I said, so after that, I says, you know something, I'm not ignoring this anymore. I'm gonna do a podcast and I'm gonna talk to these people uh, 
anytime I can yeah. to let them know I'm around and Uncle Joe did not and will not and will not ever abandon you. There we go. So in upcoming podcasts, what he's telling you is, yeah, we've already conducted some interviews and we'll continue. We have folks from India. We have folks from Africa, folks from the UK, folks from Australia. So that's what you're going to hear on the podcast. Vikings. Yes. Okay. There we go. Very good. Oh, now we go. Hi, Uncle Joe. How are you? It's so nice meeting you. It's so nice meeting you too. Oh my God, I'm sorry about my hair. All the shops are closed here. I don't have any barber shop open. You think, <laughs> you think I'm worrying about your hair? <laughs> Kathy Cole. Uncle Joe. Kathy, where are you from? Nigeria, I'm from Nigeria. Uh, I watched okay. Uncle Joe twice when you and Dave paid for someone. She was so surprised. And even the woman that was tense off. Oh, that woman, yeah. She didn't have that any woman money. That, yay, that was almost having a panic attack. You remember and that? came to our rescue, yes. Okay, that one was Joe to the rescue. I'm sure down the road we'll have a lot of interesting uh, interviews. Some some may surprise oh, you. Yeah, that's true. And then whatever topics that come up, you know, we'll we'll... We'll tackle topics and we'll keep it PC and stay away from the controversy. So, Joe, Joe, where did you get that backdrop from? Where's that from? Where is that? Your backdrop. This backdrop right here is uh, the Fountain Blue. Where's that? It's in Oneville. <laughs> no, the Fountain Blue is in Miami <laughs> Beach. <laughs> And it's a very exquisite hotel. It has been for years, very high prominent people of wealth and stature and entertainers, they go there. So in that, when, when we went to Florida to try to sell the show to the uh, distributors, uh, that's the hotel the Dead Mom Mercury was in. Uh -huh. And so that's where we went. So they, they, took me to the top floor of, of the of the hotel, which, you know, you have you have special keys and all that. Oh. Okay. So we got it. It was very, very impressive. And I'm looking around, you know. So we went out to I'm sitting right now where I was sitting with those guys. And they were saying, Joe, I'm gonna tell you an interesting story about the Fountain Blue. They said, see him back of you, that top floor. The head of the businessmen's association in Miami wanted uh, more entertainers to come into the city. They they called on Sinatra and they said, Frank, we want you to do in Miami what you did in Vegas. So they went through a lot of negotiations. This this is what they're telling me now. They went through a lot of uh, the people from Denmark Mercury, some of the workers. And they said that uh, they threw a a barrel of money at Sinatra and they said and, and he agreed he said there was one last thing they says the top floor he says I want the top floor of the uh the fountain blue so the gentleman says but Frank that's where we are that's where we do our business on the top floor so he said build another floor over it and they did <laughs> so that's my little uh Fountain blue stuff. And that's what we're looking at. And I, I love, love it. This is why this is this is why I would sit out. I was overlooking the pool and all that. This is oh. this is a beautiful area. Oh, that's so awesome. See, you never know what stories you're gonna hear when you tune into this podcast. Oh, right? that's not the best. Uh, oh, he's got some great stories, folks. You wait. Stick with us over the next uh, you know, hour, however long we do these podcasts, and uh, yeah, we'll surprise you with different things and hope you'll enjoy it.